What are you doing? I'm just painting this uh, little map bracket. Why? Well, because it's a bit rusty. Will anybody see it? No. Why don't you just put it straight back on the car? <laughs> <laughs> this is a short video all about the maximum absolute pressure sensor or map sensor on a DJtronic car. The car we're dealing with is a 1975 Mercedes 280 SL and before we can bleed the new brake master cylinder we need to drill the mounting holes for this. So I'm going to show you how to test this unit, show you what to look out for if you ever buy a second hand one and also we're going to be cleaning this up and taking this bottom plate off, stripping it, adding new anti-vibration grommets and hopefully mounting that correctly. Now these must be mounted sideways like that and not forwards. They have a very sensitive diaphragm in them and if you mount them like that that diaphragm will be subject to forces when you accelerate and brake so they must be mounted sideways. This particular one mounts under the master cylinder and in order to drill those holes I have to take that master cylinder off. Now this little um, map sensor here is called the heart of the d system. The D stands for Druck and that is referring to this here. Inside here is a diaphragm and connected at the back there is a vacuum hose and what you should never do is blow or suck on that vacuum hose because you may damage the diaphragm within it. The other thing you should never do is start fiddling about with this front screw here. There should be a blast black plastic cap on here and if there isn't it means that somebody has been in here before you which is a bad thing because these things are normally adjusted when something else is out of kilter and they are factory set and there's only about one or two people in the whole world that know how to adjust them properly and that one or two people is not going to be you or me. So if you're ever looking to buy a second hand one of these, first of all make sure it hasn't been tampered with, secondly um, make sure that it's been tested and is actually working both the electrical contacts and more importantly does it hold vacuum. The map sensor is a very delicate piece of kit and it's mounted on this plate here which in turn should be mounted on a series of rubber anti-vibration grommets. And what tends to happen after a few years is those grommets become very hard and brittle like plastic rather than rubber and end up breaking and the little inserts rust like that. Um, so we're going to make up our own just using standard open grommets like that and then we're going to use one of these fittings here and use an angle grinder just to chop off the end and put, make an insert just like that. Then we've got our three anti-vibration feet. They're not perfect but they're an awful lot better than the rusty manky fittings that came off. First up we're going to strip all the old paint and rust off here and then paint it with Eastwood Rust Encapsulator. Though I say so myself, three beautifully drilled holes. We just need to get some stainless steel screws for that fitting there. Make sure the plug still works and slightly bend those brake lines i think they'll bend themselves once we put the master cylinder back on and make sure the plug still fits in after the master cylinder is on it's the next day yesterday we painted that with some eastwood rust encapsulator we're just going to go over that now with some extreme chassis black and that should protect it for another 50 years it's a few days later we've cleaned this up with a dremel tool being careful to cover all the holes to make sure we don't get any dust down there We've painted this bracket and there should be slotted screws in here, but actually I'm going to use bolts because in my experience, after 50 years, if anyone ever needs to take that off again, it'll be easier to get the bolts undone than these slotted screws. And you won't see that once it's mounted. There is of course no point in mounting this if it doesn't work. So we're very quickly going to test the electrical connections, see if it holds vacuum. And then I'm going to spend a few minutes explaining what the two screws in the front here actually do when you adjust them and also why you should never adjust them. The idea is that we pump this up to a vacuum of 50 here and count and see how long quickly it falls down. It, um, but that isn't moving at all. If that uh, should stay at there for 10 seconds before it falls to 40.5 or 45 or minus 45, but you can see that's holding vacuum really well. So we do not have to worry about this here. The other thing you can do with a voltmeter is to test these pins here to see whether the coils are shorted to ground and whether the coils have the right resistance. 
And that's normally, when you buy one of these on second, ha second hand on eBay and they say, yeah, we've tested it, that's normally what we're doing. But um, in fairness, I don't think I've ever seen the coils inside one of these ever fail. So that test there is pretty insignificant compared to the vacuum test, because it's normally the diaphragm within here that fails, not the coils. That there is what the resistance readings should be. But as I say, it is very, very rare that the coils within that map sensor ever fail. Now, as I mentioned before, there should be a black cover on here, um, hiding these two screws here. And on some, these screws are covered by epoxy. And the there were actually two screws here. There's an outer one, which a seven mil hex, and down that hole, which you won't be able to see very easily, is actually a, another slotted screw. I am not suggesting for one moment that you do this, but if you were to hold that outer screw, and tighten the inner screw, you would make both the full load and the part, part load mixture leaner. And conversely, if you were to hold the outside and loosen the inner screw, you would make the full and the part load richer. If you were to tighten both these screws together, you would not have any effect on the part load, but you'd make the full load leaner. And similarly, if you were to loosen both these screws, there'd be no effect on the part load, but the full load would become richer. So once again, I would stress, I would not be adjusting these screws here under any circumstances. There are only a few people with the correct reference charts and the equipment to be able to adjust these. Bosch is one of them, and I think they charge to repair one of these between three and six hundred dollars. Um, and these are actually matched to the ECU. And usually there's a sticker here with a letter on it that will have the same letter as the ECU. Unfortunately, the one on mine is missing. If the diaphragm inside here is torn or leaking, the car will still run, albeit not as well as it should do. Once again, we're replacing any rusty fittings we come across with stainless steel from these guys here, Aku. These are number 12, 5.5 mil screws. That is beautifully seated in there. Everything fits as it should. We just need to make sure that the master cylinder still fits with that plug in place, which it does just about. There we go, everything fits as it should. In the next video, I'm going to be fitting the um, reservoir here, wiring up the switches and filling the system, hopefully with brake fluid, seeing if everything works. Then we'll move on to the prop shaft and see if the car still starts and what happens when we try and put it in gear. If you do ever need to make up anti-vibration feet for a map sensor or for something like the um, cold start relay in a pagoda, you could use grommets from this Fixman kit here, 255645. The size of these grommets here are 9mm internal diameter, 167 external diameter, and they're 7.5mm thick. For the metal inserts, you can use some concrete anchors like this and just chop off the tops. These are threaded ones. The ones we used were not threaded, but to get rid of the threads, you could just run a drill bit through the center.